Alignment is something we struggle with, whether in Photoshop or in relationships, but at least I got Photoshop covered for you today. So what is the problem with this kind of text, can you tell me? Let's say you select the text tool and change the issue to a bigger problem, literally. Now the issue is, first of all, these are two separate layers and we had to make them because we wanted to align them. Secondly, now you have to select this text layer, press Ctrl or Command T and try to align that properly. Try to zoom in, bring back the guides and try to fix this somehow. And if you align this side, that side is gone and then you have to align that side it's a whole another pain. And every time you want to make any kind of change, whether with the font or the words, you would have to align it all over again and work with multiple layers. Not anymore. Let's delete the second layer by selecting it and pressing the delete key. Now in the same layer, double click on the T, hit enter and type in with the text as we had before. Everything is on the same layer, so far so good. Now all you need to do is to click on this brand new button at the top, which stands for dynamic text. Brand new feature in Photoshop, long time coming. If you click on it, have a look, everything is automatically aligned. Even if you were to change the words, let's say for problem, I type in issue. See, it's aligned properly. And you can adjust the bounding box to your liking. And even if you bring back the guides by pressing Ctrl or Command R, and you drag a guide from here, this was the old guide, you would notice that it's aligned to the last pixel. So incredibly. If you look at the other side as well, it's aligned to the last pixel. Have a look at this. Properly aligned here, properly aligned there, and it's all adjustable. Before we dive deep into how it works and into more magic that it can create, know that this feature is right now only available with Photoshop Beta. And I really hope that it's coming to the general release very, very soon. So to install the beta, you need to go to your Creative Cloud desktop app, go to apps, Inside of that, go to beta at the top and you will see Photoshop beta and you can install it from here. And as usual, if you're using a Captain Jack Sparrow version of Photoshop, you know what to do best. Let's get into how it works. So here we have a car photo, which you're free to send as a gift to me. On top of that, I've created a black solid color fill with lesser opacity and brought the car at the top. So far, so good. Now, just above the fill, we are going to create some text. Select the text tool here and just type in whatever you want. So I'm just going to type in need for speed underground. We love that game. Terms and conditions apply for some reason. Now there are three ways you can convert this into dynamic text. You just have to remember one. You can either right click on the text layer, scroll down and here you'll see convert to dynamic text. The second way is going to type at the top, convert to dynamic text. And the third way, which is the easiest, is clicking on the dynamic text icon at the top. Click on it. Now this, my friend, is dynamic. As soon as you convert a regular text layer into a dynamic text layer, the text layer gets Avada Kedavra by Voldemort. In other words, it gets a lightning bolt sign at the bottom. All you have to do now is to click here. You can adjust the bounding box like so and hold the control or command, click and drag to move it. Now, as you adjust it, see the flows change how the text flows. And this might not be exactly how you want it to flow. Maybe you want certain words on certain lines and certain phrases on certain lines. And that's where automatic and manual line breaks come into existence. So far, whatever we were doing that is converting one single line into dynamic text, when we adjust that, it has a mind of its own and it adjusts words and phrases and sets up where the line breaks automatically. But in this case, let's say you wanted need for speed in one line, which it is already there underground on its separate line. So all you need to do is to select the space on the right of underground, hit enter or return. Now you have terms and conditions on another line and you can adjust the size to your liking. And if you decide to stretch it and for some reason, if underground turns out to be on the first line, again, you wanna make sure you create that line break there. Just select the space between speed and underground, hit enter or return. This will make sure that the word underground is on its separate line. Now with dynamic text, there are settings that you can control and there are settings that you just cannot control and there are alternatives for that. Let's start with things that you can control. First of all, you can definitely control the size like this, but sometimes it can lead to line breaks. So instead, just hold the control or command and then you can resize it, but you will notice that it stretches as well. As you're holding the control or command, hold the shift as well to maintain the ratio. Resize it accordingly, let go of the shift, keep holding the control or command, and then you can use that to move it as well. But if it's getting complicated for you, just do this. Hit escape if the text is active and then press control or command D. 
and now you can resize it however you want, rotate it if you want, move it if you want. It just gets so much more simpler and straightforward. The next thing we have in control is something magical. It is what makes the difference between professional text and just basic stuff. So with the text tool selected, you can select separate lines. For example, instead of selecting everything, I'm going to select need for speed. And now if you hold the Alt key or the Option key, and then use the arrow keys, you will notice the space between the letters increase. And that is called tracking. You can also increase it from the character or the properties panel. With the dynamic text layer selected, you can open up the properties. If you cannot see the properties, go to window and just make sure properties is activated. Inside of that, you will see the tracking settings. Let us select just the first line, which is need for speed. And you will notice tracking is set to 340. You can reduce it to five, you can keep it at 100. You see the space between the letters increase. Let us select terms and conditions as well. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, arrow keys to increase the tracking. This looks fantastic. Luxury text. The other thing you have in control is definitely the font. With terms and conditions selected, I can change it to Gilroy, not black, light. You can also change other characteristics like bold, underline, italic, all the basic stuff. Let's say I want to change need for speed underground this text to italic. You can press the shortcut, command, shift, I, control, shift, I. Now it's italic. You can also choose an italic font. That's entirely up to you. Now let's talk about kerning. Now what is kerning? It is the individual space between the letters. Let's say here's a regular text. This is not a dynamic text layer. If we were to select the text tool and bring it between E and X here, place it there. And then if you press Alt key or the Option key and the arrow keys, the space between just that increases. And you will notice a different setting is changing. This is different from tracking because it controls the individual spaces between the letters. So far, so good. Sometimes you can use it to balance the text. However, with dynamic text, this is supposed to work. So again, with the text tool, Let's say you want to increase the space between O and U. If you hold the Alt key or the Option key and the arrow keys, not much happens. You can increase it as much as you want. The space here increases. The behavior is kind of weird. Now keep in mind, this is just a simple bug. And by the time you're watching this, it might be entirely solved. I've already spoken to Pete Green, who's the senior product manager at Photoshop, taking care of this. He's a master at what he does and they're really working hard at it and they'll get it fixed in no time. And finally, the other thing you have in control is the baseline shift. Since you cannot control the leading, which is the space between individual lines, you have to use the baseline shift. And if you cannot see that setting here, click on the three dots and you'll see this icon. So I have selected terms and conditions apply and you can increase it or decrease it. Let's keep it right about there and have a look how beautifully aligned everything is. Now let's come to settings that we cannot control and we'll also cover some alternatives. First of all, you cannot change the font size. Let's say we select underground and no matter what we set the size to, it doesn't do anything. And it makes sense because the size has to be as big as the bounding box, right? The second thing we cannot control is the leading, which is the space between the lines. If you were to select everything and control the leading, it does nothing. So what do we do? There are some new settings which we will cover later. And finally, the paragraph settings just won't work. Let's say we were to create a paragraph like this. This is looking fine so far. If we were to convert this into dynamic text by clicking here, it is right now dynamic. If you open up paragraph settings by clicking here and then going to paragraph, none of this actually works really. It also doesn't work with bullets and numberings. So keep that in mind. Now two new settings that has come to dynamic text is word gap and line gap. Let us select the dynamic text layer and let's open up the properties. As soon as you scroll down, you'll notice a section for dynamic text. And if it's active, this will be active. And that may be the fourth way of activating it. Right now, this is regular text. Right now, this is dynamic text. Inside of that, this one is the word gap. The more you increase it, you will notice the space between the words increase. And if you set it to zero, this is normal space between the words. If you set it to minus 100%, there is literally no space between the words. So let's keep it zero. This one is the line gap. And as you set it to, let's say, zero, there is no space between the lines. If you set it to 25%, there's a little more space. If you set it to 150%, there's a lot of space. So you see how this works? 
Very simple and straightforward. So that's all about dynamic text. If you want to read more about this tool, there's this article by Adobe. I'll link that up in the description if you're interested. Also, I want to give a big shout out to two major people, Pete Green from the Photoshop team for showing me this feature and being there to listen to my feedback. That means a lot. And secondly, big shout out to the OG Photoshop teacher, Julianne Cost. You all know her. And it is her video where I learned about this feature better. I've also linked that in the description. Let me know what you think of this feature. Probably Adobe reads the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.